October was another wild month in real estate. A lot of things change and you're seeing a lot of new headlines coming out about how everything is doom and gloom in the real estate market. But is it actually that bad? Well, that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. So I'm going to be going over my November housing market forecast for Orange County. Well, we're going to talk about everything going on and look at some actual data so you can get a better understanding of what's actually happening and not just looking at the clickbait articles. So let's go ahead and get into it. So November is here. It feels like half the people I know right now are currently sick, including myself, which is pretty on point for this time of year. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening in the housing market. First, we're gonna look at supply, demand, interest rates. Then we're gonna break down what that actually means for the Orange County housing market. And then ultimately what it means for you as a buyer or seller, if you're thinking of making a transaction in the next couple months. So let's go ahead and start with the supply side first. So supply is currently sitting a little bit under 3,700 homes in Orange County right now. And it's really been stuck at that range give or take a few dozen homes for about the last six weeks so that's a little bit unusual for this time of year typically right now we're seeing supply go down by about a percent percent and a half per week as we kind of transition into the holiday season so seeing supply kind of flatline at this point is definitely uncommon however it's important to put that in context so most people that don't fall the market every day you hear 3700 homes that probably doesn't mean much to you so let's go ahead and look at history to kind of give you a better indication of exactly where we are. So if you look at the numbers prior to COVID, so the three years prior to COVID, 2017 to 2019, we are usually sitting at about 6,000 homes on the market at this point. So right now we currently have about 63% less homes than an average year on the market. So supply is still extremely low. So remember that number because we're gonna come back to it later. So before we move on to the demand side of things, the last thing I wanna mention about supply is if you're seeing news articles saying that inventory is spiking like crazy right now, it looks like we're about to go into another housing collapse, that is not happening in Orange County. So if you're reading these headlines, you need to make sure that you're reading real estate headlines from the local market because real estate is local. There's different things happening here than places like Arizona, places like Boise, Idaho, where you have a lot more overvalued homes and home prices are coming down a lot quicker there. So make sure when you're checking these articles out about real estate that you find ones that are local because that's going to give you the most accurate information to go off of when you're making a decision about buying or selling a house here here in Orange County. Now let's go ahead and move on to the demand side of things. So demand has dropped a whopping 31% over the last month and a half in Orange County, which is a significant number because typically when you look at pre-COVID, we usually see demand drop by about 11% over the same time period. So 31% is definitely abnormal and much more than usual. And right now we actually have 72% less demand in the marketplace than we typically do, again, comparing it to pre-COVID. So demand is very low right now. So you might be thinking to yourself, if we have 72% less demand than we typically do, it's one of the lowest demand rings we've ever had, why are we not seeing home prices plummeting in Orange County? Well, there's a couple reasons. So the media tends to focus all of their attention on two main things, how much demand there is and how many transactions are taking place. But the problem is that doesn't really show the full picture. So when you see these clickbait headlines, you have to make sure you're reading the fine print and actually going through the articles to see if they mention this. So yes, demand is extremely low right now. Yes, we are seeing transactions come down, but number one, just because we have less transactions in the marketplace doesn't mean you're seeing depreciation. Deceleration does not mean depreciation. Yes, there's definitely a lot less transactions happening in the market, especially compared to last year. However, that doesn't mean that home prices are falling. And the second thing they tend not to put in the headlines is that supply is also extremely low. So bringing it back to those numbers we talked about, when supply is 63% lower than it typically is, and demand is 72% lower than it typically is, you can see that yes, there is a slight imbalance, but it's not massive. And this makes complete sense because right now, demand is slightly lower than supply, so we're seeing slightly lower prices every single month. We're not seeing any giant changes, but we are seeing home prices start to come down, but very gradually. And that's exactly what you should expect when there's a slight imbalance in supply and demand. And you can really expect that slight imbalance to remain for the rest of the year. So yes, prices will continue to slowly decline as the rest of the year goes on, but we're not talking about five, 10% drops in appreciation. We're talking about slow and steady 
1% a month declines going forward until something happens that's going to dramatically alter the supply or the demand. And the other data point that really brings us all together and really reinforces this is that the average days on market is a very good indication on how hot the real estate market is. So how long it takes for a seller to put their sign in the yard to when it goes into escrow. And over the last month, it has been going up, but again, not significantly. So it's gone from 77 days to 87 days. Now, some of you might be thinking, yes, that's a giant jump. However, when you look back at history, let's go ahead and look back at the last housing crisis that we had. When we were in that housing crisis, the average days on market in Orange County was over a year. So you can see this is nowhere near any type of crisis situation. It's still relatively normal and the market is still in a healthy balance right now. Again, because that supply and demand number are so close when it comes to how far they've come down. So anybody sitting there waiting for housing prices to fall 20% over the next six months, you're going to be disappointed. The supply and demand is just not there to make that happen. So now let's go on to the most important story in real estate right now, which is interest rates, because that is completely driving the market at this point. So interest rates at the beginning of this year were 3.2%, and as of right now, which is November 3rd, they're hovering at 7.3% on average. So more than doubling, which is completely killing the affordability and making a lot of buyers drop out of the market because they just can't afford those monthly mortgage payments anymore. So the biggest question that most people have right now around the real estate industry is when are these interest rates going to go down and are they going to go down? So I'm going to do my best to answer that question with as much data as we currently have to give you at least an idea because no one has a crystal ball. No one knows exactly when interest rates are going to go back down, but based on history as well as data, we can give you the best idea of when to expect it to start happening. Happening. So as of right now, most economists are saying that at the earliest we're going to see interest rates start to go back down would have to be sometime at the very end of quarter two or quarter three of next year. And that's the earliest. So what makes interest rates go down? Inflation. So once we start seeing inflation get under control and start heading down, interest rates have always followed that. So if you're looking to see when rates might come down, you have to be checking out that CPI data that comes out every month to see when inflation starts to go down. Now again, the general consensus right now is sometime by middle of next year, we should hopefully start seeing that inflation come down, which again would start to bring interest rates down, but it's not going to be a massive decrease all at once. It's going to be a gradual process, which means it's usually going to be a gradual process for interest rates to go down as well. So the second biggest question I get around inflation and interest rates is, okay, once we do start seeing inflation go down, and interest rates go down, how far down will interest rates actually go? So let's go ahead and again, look at some data to give us a better idea of what we might be able to expect. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but we're looking at historical data to give you a better idea of what might happen in the future. So over the last six recessions that we've had in the United States, the average interest rate has dropped by 1.8% from the peak to where the recession ends. So if we're getting close to that peak, which most experts believe that we are right now, somewhere in the mid sevens, then at some point there's a good chance that we could see interest rates in the mid fives again at the end of this recession. Now let's go even further down this rabbit hole and say, okay, what are the chances that it will be less than 1.8% and what are the chances it will be more than 1.8% when it finally drops at the end of the recession? And really it's gonna come down to two things things how long it takes us to see meaningful change in that inflation data and how much job loss has to happen in the meantime for us to get there. And the reason this is important is the longer it takes for inflation to go down, the more job loss is going to happen and it's going to hurt the economy more. And when the economy gets hurt, it's going to be almost impossible for the feds to engineer that soft landing they keep talking about and it's a good chance it will go into a deeper recession. Now, anytime we go into a deeper recession, the chances the fed have having to then reverse and pull us back out of the recession increase. And when that happens, they tend to reduce rates. And in this case, would usually reduce interest rates as well, further than that 1.8%. Now on the other side of things, let's say we get inflation under control in the first quarter of next year, we start seeing meaningful decreases in inflation and it's happening faster than expected. Well, in that case, there's going to be less job loss, less pain, and usually that will mean that you're gonna see less than that 1.8% interest rate decline. So everything is really coming down to when we see that inflation data start turning. The faster we see it turning, the less likely you're gonna see a giant swing in interest rates. However, they still will go down. 
the longer it takes for us to get there, the better chance you're going to see over that 1.8% interest rate decrease over the long term by the end of the recession. Okay, so enough with the data and the projections. What does this all mean for buyers and sellers that are looking to purchase a property over the next couple months? Let's go ahead and start on the buyer side first. Okay, so buyers, there's really no way around it. Right now is one of the hardest times for buyers to purchase a home because prices have skyrocketed, interest rates have skyrocketed, and the affordability is almost at all time lows right now, which makes it hard for most buyers to justify getting into a home. So there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. So let's go over them. So number one, you have to understand why you're purchasing the home. And that might sound kind of odd, but typically you're buying the home for two different types of things. Number one, you're an investor. So you're buying a house, you might live there with your family for two or three years and you're thinking about flipping it, selling it, and then maybe upgrading to something else in the future. And the other way of purchasing a house is that you're going through and you're purchasing a property for you and your family to live in for let's say the next five plus years. You want those fixed monthly payments so you don't have to worry about your rent going up. You wanna be able to customize the property how you want. And you just wanna be able to make some great memories for you and your family. And eventually down the line, five, 10, 15 years later, maybe you'll need to upgrade to something bigger or something that's gonna fit your lifestyle at that point, but there's no immediate need for you to do that. Those are the type of buyers right now that are still going to be able to look at homes and if they are affordable, be able to purchase them confidently knowing that over the long run, that five, 10 year period, real estate has always gone up. So if you're looking to purchase a home as an investment, you have to be more cautious right now. If you're looking to purchase a home to live in the property for the long term, these ups and downs in the market overall are not going to impact you as much because you don't need to sell it right away. You're not trying to make a profit on it right away. You're trying to find a place for you and your family to live long term. So if that's the way you're trying to purchase a property, let's go over some of the strategies that you could be using right now to make it a little bit more affordable for you to get into the home. Because if you can't afford to get into a home and you're going to be there long term, the next six months is going to provide one of the best opportunities for buyers in terms of how much leverage they have compared to the seller that we've seen in a very long time. So when you're going out looking for homes, homes are sitting on the market for weeks at this point. So you're not having to go see it on a Friday, place an offer on a Saturday, and by Sunday you have 30 offers on the home. You're able to see a house, check it out. Maybe you can get to it that weekend, maybe not. Maybe you have to wait two weeks before you can go check it out. Usually it's still going to be there. So there's not that pressure that we've seen over the last two years to buy a home, compromise, get into something as quick as you can to try to outbid the other person. You're able to take your time, place offers that are either at or even slightly the below the actual market value of the home. And a lot of sellers are considering those right now. And on top of that, once you get into escrow, you have a lot more leverage. So if there's something wrong with the property, you're able to request a lot more repairs than you have been in the past. And even on top of that, a lot of sellers right now are giving you closing cost credits, down payment credits, credits to buy down your rate so your interest rate is lower, so it makes it more affordable to you. So again, if you can't afford to purchase a home right now, there are a lot of pros to doing so when you have this much leverage. Now, if you are trying to purchase a home and the seller is willing to credit you for some of these buy down programs, but you don't really know what buy down programs are, well, I don't have time to explain all of them today. However, over the last couple of weeks, I've had a pretty extensive library of all the different type of programs out there to help you get into a home right now that make the down payment as well as the interest rate much more affordable. So you can check out a lot of them right here or just go back to my channel and listen to the last couple episodes where I've covered them in detail and gone step by step and broken them down by the numbers and exactly how you do it. So definitely check that out. If you're not watching this on YouTube and you wanna see those, just head over to my channel, just search Orange County Housing Market News and you'll find all the information you need about those type of loan programs. So now let's go ahead and look at the seller side of things. So sellers, if you're trying to debate right now, should I put my house on the market? The holidays are coming up. I really don't know if I wanna do that. I've heard it's a slow time of year to do so. Do I really wanna do that or wait till next year? The easiest thing for me to tell you right now is I could almost guarantee at this point, if you're waiting till next year, you're going to get less for your house. So if you're able to place your house on the market and you don't mind the inconvenience right now, you will get more for your house right now than you would, let's say January or February next year, because the current trends are showing interest rates are not coming down. You're going to have demand muted the remainder of this year going into next year, which means home prices will continue slowly going down. Now again, 
We're not talking about dramatic numbers, so you really have to weigh the pros and cons and see if it's worth you getting that extra few percent now versus waiting until next spring to sell. But if it is worth it for you, get your house on the market now so you can take advantage of the higher price before next year starts. And really the only other big advice I have for sellers right now is that you have to understand the market. Patience is going to be key. Like I said earlier, the average days on market is approaching over two months right now. However, if it's marketed properly, you can usually get good offers on your home within a few weeks and get it into escrow. So that all brings it back to how your property is marketed. So if you're going and you're interviewing agents and they're telling you, hey, we're gonna put it online, it's gonna go on Zillow, on Redfin, we're gonna have open houses, it's gonna be great, we're gonna get your house sold, kick them out of the house right now. That's not the type of agent that you're going to need to be able to have success in today's market. Your agent needs to be using all avenues and all channels to be able to get as many eyeballs on your property as possible so that way you can still sell it for the highest price without having to wait months to do so. So you need to make sure your agent is doing not only professional photos, but professional videos floor plans, 3D walkthroughs, their online advertising on places like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Google, even TikTok now, because a lot of first time home buyers are on TikTok and the age range of TikTok is continuing to go up. So a lot of those 30 year olds like myself are also on TikTok looking at people's content. So don't forget about those places that you might not think will attract that many buyers because these places are where a lot of buyers are coming from right now. You also need to make sure that your agent is doing mega open house of letting all your neighbors know so they can invite their friends over to see if that property be right for them because who doesn't want their friends living in their neighborhoods? So if all of your neighbors know that your house is for sale, then there's usually a good pool of buyers that are gonna come out of that looking at the property as well. So all of these avenues are just the very basic that your agent should be doing in today's market to make sure you have success. And then the other thing is making sure you price it right. You cannot stretch your price anymore. In the majority of cases, you're really going to have two options for your pricing strategy. You can price it at market value, which in that case, even with good marketing, could take a few few weeks to get a couple offers on the property, or you can place it slightly below market value, draw up that interest, create that frenzy, try to get multiple offers to drive the price back up to market value, and that will get your house sold faster. So if you're concerned about, I don't want all these people in my house during the holidays, I wanna still get it sold quickly, that might be a better pricing option. If you're not in any hurry and you don't mind the inconvenience, then you can price it at market value. It just might take a few weeks longer to be able to sell that way. So is the market more difficult for both buyers and sellers right now? Yes. Is it going to get better anytime soon? No. So the biggest thing to remember is that if you're a buyer or a seller, you just have to understand the market and know what to expect. If you have the proper expectations going in, you're not gonna set yourself up for disappointment and you're going to be able to be successful whether you're buying or selling a home. If you find this information useful, can you please hit that like, subscribe, and heart button below? It really helps me out. And also, if you have any family or friends that might find this information useful, please consider sharing it with them as well. I would really appreciate it. So until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and I will see you on next week's show. Bye.